be saucy and falling. Trust me, you want it. Sweetie, you're my darling, yeah. Hoodie, you're my darling, yeah. Shut as a lead, I'd rather be a nerd. I feel like Zuckerberg, I feel like Zuckerberg. I'd rather read, I'd rather be a nerd. I feel like Zuckerberg, I feel like Zuckerberg. Hey, welcome back to Dr. Think and Shine's Neighborhood. It's Judy Love Bowman, a.k.a. Dr. Think and Shine. Welcome back to the channel. If you're tuning in for the first time, please subscribe and hit your notification bell so you'll know when we upload new videos. This is the premier channel for parents, teachers, homeschoolers, quarantine schoolers, grandparents, and all those who want the best for our children. So, if anyone out there is celebrating a birthday this week or this month, happy birthday from Dr. Think and Shine and Friends. And this is my birthday month. I want to thank you all. I got a book from China. Someone else sent me a booklet on Rosa Parks. She was one of my mentors. And uh, I just want to thank you all for the birthday love. Dr. Judy Online is my cash app. And I just thank you so much. And to those of you celebrating birthdays, happy, happy birthday on this your special day. Happy, happy birthday. That's what I want to say. Happy, happy birthday. May all your dreams come true. Happy, happy birthday from Dr. Think and Shine and Friends to you. That's it. Clap, clap, clap. Yeah. So, today... We're going to look through our governess goggles. We're still so excited about the new season of Teen Mom 2. And some of you may know I've been following the Teen Mom segment uh, show since the children were first born. Okay? So for 10 years now. And we're going to look through our governess goggles. And those of you who know is the governess goggles segment is when I put on my social scientist hat and look at different issues in the Whew, this is a big one look at different issues in the uh, um, in the world so right now I just want to take a look at Jade from Teen Mom 2 and I do want to say again that the teen moms are very brave Jade is very brave her family is brave because they have to open their lives up to criticism and the governor's goggles are not to criticize we're making observations we're not criticizing we're just looking and learning there's no judgment here so Jade who is new she replaced Janelle and I guess they needed some other family that had a lot going on because Janelle Evans got put off the show alleged because her husband allegedly wrote some homophobic comics and uh, comments and then threatened when she started filming. So it was just a big mess. So now Jade replaced Janelle. And there's something else. How I look at social media and everybody fast forwards through chill. Say, well, not everybody. I'm just saying an observation. Just a qualitative observation. Not quantitative. I haven't done any statistics. But a lot of people are like, well, I fast forward past Chelsea in this show. And I fast forward forward past Cynthia Bailey on the Housewives of Atlanta and fast forward past let me see who else some whole shows I stop stop watching because sometimes it's just so boring but people like to see a train wreck on the show on the show but let me say first about Jade Dr. Think and Shine has a book in the Dr. Think and Shine's no I think I think this is um this is the Dr. Think and Shine series. Yeah. There are 20 books in the Dr. Think and Shine series and 20 books in the Dr. Think and Shine Goes to School series. But in the Dr. Think and Shine series, there's a book that says Treasures in the Trap. And Jade, I want you to know that although this show has been documenting your mother and stepfather or father, your mother and your parents and your boyfriend's alleged drug use, that you're a treasure. There are treasures in the trap. So you may be filming in the trap. You may be rearing Chloe in a trap. But you're a treasure and so is she. So treasures in the trap. I might read some at the end. But let's get to what we're here to look at. Let's look at Jade. So 
last season, as I said, she replaced Janelle. And during season nine, during the season nine reunion special, Jade's mom, Christy, said she felt attacked by Jade and Dr. Drew. And she stormed off the set. She said, the hardest thing is having it all aired out on TV because all my bad shit is on TV. Nobody, all my bad stuff is on TV. Nobody airs nothing good. And as I said, uh, Christy and Jay, the whole family is brave for even doing this. Jay said, it's your own insecurities of what you feel about the mistakes you've made. That's what you feel about yourself deep down. And that's what not what people are thinking. And Dr. Drew senses a ticking time bomb. He says, slow up, sh sh slow up, slow up. And, and uh, Christy says, just back off a little. So there were a lot of hard feelings at the reunion. Grandma sits between them speechless. Whoever grandma is, she's speechless. I don't know if she that's her personality, if she's quiet, if she's medicated, if she's sad, depressed. I don't know. I don't know, Grandma. I think her name is Lori. But Jane's told her mom, no one's attacking you. Christy said, because no one's attacking you. You're pissing me the F off. Christy storms off the reunion, and she said, I'm her mother. I'll knock her ass out. So an hour later, they must have been like Freddie. Freddie forgives. <laughs> Freddie forgives from the Dr. Thinkenshine and Shine series. So Freddie forgives and they forgive because an hour later they made up and ate lunch with Jade's grandparents and boyfriend Sean. Now, as Jade's mom, Christy, discussed the way she felt attacked, Jade said, You don't have to be on the show. Jade was like, No one is perfect. You know, they kind of pick on me. Da, 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 da. I'm, at, I'm at, paraphrasing. And Christy said, You look like a rose. Sean said, She is a damn rose. See, encouragement builds confidence because even though Sean and the grandfather were kind of quiet and Sean had some nonverbal stuff going on because he's young too. It's even traumatic for a grown person to be in that kind of environment, uh, that kind of hostility around. But he said she is a damn rose. But that was good. He stood up for his, for, for his girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever they are, his co-parent. Because encouragement builds confidence. This was would have been a perfect time. This would have been a perfect time for Christy, Jade's mom, to say, you're right, she has been a role. She's been good to me. Because even though Jade did not bail her mom out of jail last season when she called and asked her to bail, she said, I'm not going to bail my mom out of jail. What, so she can just be on the streets? So even though she didn't bail her out, there, there was a time when she let the mother and her husband stay with them and live with them in their apartment that Jay was paying for. And she was like, it smells like smoke. Are y'all smoking? She, they were like, it must just be in our clothes because I guess they would go to the bingo hall. And, you know, the clothes, smoke gets in your clothes. It was in the house. I'm just saying she's been there for her mom, even though she didn't bond her from jail that time. So people can't give what they don't have. So even though Jade's mom didn't encourage her, she couldn't give her what she didn't have. Hmm. I remember one time when Jay's mom, season nine, was watching Christy. Jay's mom was watching Chloe, Jade's daughter, and she couldn't get her. She gave her two hundred. She said she gave her two hundred and some dollars the night before to get their phones turned on, and she kept calling the next morning because she knows her daughter gets up early. She couldn't. Neither one of their phones was on. She didn't know they had been staying in an extended stay hotel. She didn't know where they were staying, and they had her daughter. Oh, bless the children. Protect the children, Lord. Jay, so they, let's get back to when they were meeting at, for dinner, for lunch, after the reunion special last season. Jay said, I didn't make you, I don't make you all be on the show, Christy said, but my name has been run through the mud. Actually, it, you know, and actually the show is just documenting your life. See, the, the, they might edit the show a certain way, but there's no commentary from the producers. Now, the producers might ask certain questions during the uh, interview segments, but they're just documenting your life. And I, like I said, Christy is being very brave to do this. She's probably doing it because she needs the money. But Jay's telling her, you do not have to do the show. Jay said, if you don't want to be on the effing show, don't be on the show. Christy said, don't talk to me like that. You disrespect me all the time. I didn't raise you like that. It's BS. Jay said, why do you keep running your mouth? Christy said, because you keep disrespecting me as she's packing up her food. 
Jay said, if you don't want to be on the show, then don't be on the effing show. Don't do it. I can't yell too loud because I'm not going to get my blood pressure up trying to recreate this scene, but you can go back and watch the full episode. Chrissy said, just leave me the F alone packing her food. Jay said, you're literally out of your mind. And during this whole time, the men are being very subdominant, grandma too. But the men, the grandfather, that's Lori's husband, the grandmother's husband, and Sean, the Jade's baby, Chloe's father, very quiet, very subdominant. Jade, you're literally out of your mind. Christy, disrespectful. Jay said, no one is disrespectful. If you don't want to film, get the F out. Don't talk to me like that. Then Christy told her grandma, tell her to stop disrespecting me. Grandma finally spoke. The dead has arisen, to quote a line from Color Purple. The dead is arisen. Grandma said, stone-faced. Oh, no. Grandma still didn't say anything at that point. She was just packing her food and silent. Jade said, go, go away. I'm over you. Christy said, I'm over you talking to me like that. Shut up. Jay said, no one is disrespecting you. You're crazy. You lost your mind. Christy said, no, you're disrespectful because these cameras have changed you. And that's what set it off. When Christy said the cameras have changed you, Jay said, change me. Jay said, change me. Get the F out of here. Dismissing her with her hand. Like, get the F out of here. Christy turns around and charges into the room and gets up in Jay's face, close to Jay's face. Face to face. Jay said, Christy said, don't ever talk to me like that. Have some GD respect. Here we go. Whew. You know that kicks Dr. Thing and Shine in the pants. Have mercy, Lord Jesus. Now, some of these words are okay. We kind of normalized them. But using God's name in vain is never okay. Ooh, have mercy, Jesus. Whew, no wonder. These generational curses. Whew. Don't, don't you ever talk to me like that. Have some GD respect. Now, how can G damn and respect go in the same sentence? Have mercy. Have respect for God. How about that? I don't care if you high or not. You know that. Whether you're homeless or not, you know to have respect for God. Either that or get off my TV. MTV, you better start bleeping that stuff out. Like I said, some of my favorites, I don't care if they talk about the F word, the P word, the D word, the any word. But don't use God's name in vain or get off my TV. I got that from nephew Tommy. <laughs> the prank call when the man <laughs> called and asked him for his kidneys. He said, you better get off my phone. That's why I said, better get off my TV. But I'm serious about that. Ugh. Whew. Have mercy, Jesus. God is a jealous God. He comes first. Don't curse him and don't put anything before him. Don't do that. I think about Wendy Williams and Tiffany Haddish. Last season, when Wendy Williams was interviewing Tiffany Haddish. And Tiffany was like, well, God comes. Wendy said, oh, well, your career comes first. And Tiffany was like, no, God comes first. Wendy said, well, we know your career comes first. And kept on just overriding what Tiffany was saying. Now, we praying for Wendy that we, who we haven't seen on TV. You can't. God is a jealous God. You can't put anything before him. And don't use his name in vain. Oh, Lord Jesus, have mercy. That just put me on a whole different thing. My whole countenance changed. Whew, have mercy, Lord. So she said, don't ever talk to me like that. Have some GD respect. Even Dr. Thinkershine's braids getting a twirl from that. Uh, Jade said, go, go. Poor thing, because Jade is a child too. If I saw my child that upset, why am I going to keep going? Uh, 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 Sean was at the window. He kind of peeped over his shoulder. Christy puts her finger in Jade's face and said, you need to effing apologize. Jay said, you say I changed because of an effing cameras right here? And her mom talked over her. She's changed, hasn't she, mama? Now, this is the first time grandma spoke. The dead has arisen. That's where that color purple line comes in. Grandma said, I'm not getting into the middle of this. And that's the first word she spoke since this whole bomb struck. Okay? Jay said, I never changed. Christy said, yes. Yes, you have. You never talked to me like that. Probably that ain't true. Because she probably just embarrassed that it's on camera. Jay said, bye, go away, you're lying. And Christy just stands there. Christy said, don't buy me. Jay was just trembling and hysterical. Stop, go, go, mom. 
And then Christy charges at her and storms in her face and says, don't talk to me like that as she points into her face. And Grandma said, Christy, let's just go. Grandma packing up her food, too. Jay said, go, get the fuck out. You're dis... Oh, excuse me. Jay said, go, get the F out. You're disrespecting me. Jumping up in my face like you, you, you're gonna F and do something to me. Go, I'm your kid. Stop acting like I'm some bitch on the street. Christy said, don't talk to me like that. J Jay said, go, like hysterically. You're spitting in my effing face. Christy said, are you kidding me? You're a little brat is what you are. She walks off with her food and her overnight bag and walks on down the hallway. Jane said, I don't want to effing film with her fists up. I don't want to effing film. Take this mother effing mic before I start seriously throwing it. I'm going to lose my effing cool. Please get the F out. Everyone get the F out. Oh, Lord Jesus. Please respect that I am a person and that I have shit going on in my, and that I have S going on in my life. Go. Then the camera, please go. But let me just say this. Comment and let me know. This is no different. I mean, this may be a little more hostility, but this is no different the way Kim Kardashian and Khloe Kardashian talk to their mother on Keeping Up With The Kardashians. I stopped watching that, the episodes back when they were taking some Chris, some picture and Courtney couldn't show up and Kim said, well, you're the least interesting one to look at. Oh, sure, I got more to do with my time than just look. But... Because of their socioeconomic status and the interference with the criminal justice system with the mom. See, the farther you go through the criminal justice system, the poorer and the blacker it gets. So these people, are, even though they have blue eyes, the Christy has blue eyes, they're not on the socioeconomic level. They're in the trap. Treasure's in the trap. And the Kardashians are in Calabasas. That's the, in the hidden hills. That's the difference. But it's the same dynamic going on. Because I've heard Courtney, uh, Chloe and Kim talk to their mother horribly. I can't recall specific uh, episodes. I don't follow that anymore. But anyway, she. But what I want to say is, back here, where they were going back and forth in the lunch, having lunch. When she said, "Don't talk to me like that," as she points in her face. And Jay said, go get the fuck, get the F out. You're disrespecting me, jumping up in my face like you're going to F and do something to me. I'm your kid. Stop acting like I'm some bitch on the street. The Bible says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It's the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life in the earth. Now, obey your parents in the Lord. It doesn't say obey your parents in whatever they're doing. But the Bible also, when it says, children, obey your parents, in the New Testament, it also says, Child, uh, parents, children obey your parents. Parents, do not provoke your children in anger. She kept saying, you're disrespecting me, but you're provoking her. She must have been reared to disrespect you. She must have seen this before. This just didn't happen when MTV came on the scene a year ago. So I'm not judging, but don't provoke your children. This was... Oh, this was heavy. That's why I saved this one till last. Because Dr. Thinkershine's going to need to take a break after this. Have mercy and thank you, Jesus. Bless that family, Lord. So they all get out. Oof. Yeah, I might need to take a couple of aspirin. Now, I don't mean children to aspirin. I need the extra strength Tylenol after this. Okay, so the new that was the end of last season. New season, new episode. Jade and Sean have an argument. Then we have Chloe's second birthday. Happy birthday, Chloe. Where Dr. Thinkershine's birthday glasses? Happy second birthday, Chloe. And guess what, Jade? It's not the terrible twos. It's the terrific twos. Happy terrific two, Chloe, Chloe. So, um, a friend took Chloe and will bring her to the party later. Let me just say that about this. Chloe stayed with Jade's parents, Christy and her husband, in the hotel she wasn't sure what hotel she was in. She said she used to be in an extended stay when they had no phone service, even though she gave her the money for the phone. She, she uh, said her mom allegedly is on drugs, so she gives her mom 200 some dollars with her daughter for the phones. And all I'm saying, friends, is, is, is pray about your child care options. And I was into attachment parenting. I breastfed. I would have my son on my backpack, on my front. I, 
everybody is not into attachment parenting. So whether you are or not, you still need to be careful about your child care concerns. And I know you're young and you need a babysitter, you got to work, you got to go to beauty school. But I'd rather live in a studio apartment in a, in, a, in a less than desirable area and be there with my child than to have some Mercedes and going out or doing something else. I mean, I just, I'm not making a judgment. I just want you all to make good child care decisions. Because when children are left in the wrong hands, it changes who they are. It really does. So not just with here or with um, Chloe, she left it. And I'm sure that was a perfectly good friend. Don't get me wrong. Just making the point. Similarly, I know uh, Brianna left, let Nova stay with um, Devon last season. And he got, apparently, allegedly got drunk. And so she kind of started monitoring that. And that's what you do. Nobody's perfect. We all make mistakes. We don't know. We didn't know Devon, Devon was going to have a can in his hand, like the man with the can in his hand by Dr. Thakishan. Uh, I also want to make a reference to Teen Mom OG. Tyler and Caitlin left Nova on one, one season. That really bothered me. And I know, I know their dad, Butch, uh, Tyler's dad, Butch, is a great guy. And we, we all have challenges. But they went on some overnight trip and left Nova with him overnight. And I'm not saying because somebody's on drugs or because somebody's been in jail that they're not a good babysitter. They also left, I think, both kids or either Veda with Tyler's best friend. And she had just gotten out of jail. Just watch your choices. Their treasure's in the trap. Their babysitter's in the trap. But I, I just wasn't comfortable with how nonchalant you going to try to decorate a cake and decorate a party over who's going to watch your child? No. Bring the child in the cake. Make it work. Make it work. Children need to have at least one primary attachment figure. One. At least one. Be that one. Be that one. Have mercy, Jesus. Yeah. I pray about the people that you leave your children with. Apparently, Jade and her mother made up because they all work together for Chloe's second birthday. I guess they forgave like Freddie Forgives. Freddie Forgives by Dr. Think and Shine. Freddie Forgives. Freddie and Janet were friends, classmates, and church youth choir members. They played together, dot, dot, dot. One day while playing kickball, Janet said to Freddie, your daddy's bald-headed and your mama doesn't go to church. Freddie threw the ball to Genus, who was already upset because of the rhymes his classmates were making about his name that day. Mr. Marcolini ran over to Freddie and questioned him. Freddie held his hands over his face and said, Janet said that my dad is bald and my mother does not go to church. Mr. Marcolini told Freddie, feel what you feel, but control what you do. You could have injured Janus by throwing the ball to him out of anger. Freddie went inside and spoke to Mrs. Williams, his head teacher. Dot, dot, dot. The next day, Freddie did not speak to Janet. He did not even look at Janet. Dot, dot, dot. Freddie and Janet had been classmates and church member for years. He missed talking to her and laughing with her. He missed trading his cauliflower for her donuts. He missed his friend. Freddie remembered what his Sunday school teacher and Tyler Perry taught him about forgiveness. His teachers taught him that we need to forgive others the way we want God to forgive us when we do something wrong. Tyler Perry said, when you haven't forgiven those who've hurt you, you turn your back against the future. When you do forgive, you start walking forward. Freddie wants to walk forward. Freddie wants to, a happy future, dot, dot, dot. That's just something from Freddie forgives. Jay forgives. Christy forgives. Isn't that wonderful? Because if they didn't, they wouldn't have been working on this party together. However many months apart this was, that's great. Because God forgives us. He loves us so much he gave his only son Jesus to die on Calvary's cross for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave Jesus to die for our sins. The sins we committed in the past. The sins that we're committing right now. And the sins that we'll commit in the future. He gave his only begotten son to die on Calvary's cross for us. And I think amen belongs right there. So, thank you Jesus. Uh... So apparently they made up. They all came to the party. 
Sean brought her a board, painted pink, to use a height chart. Magnificent. Great. And it was a board so that way she can move it from place to place as she moves. I have one that, that I started. I think my son was two or three. And it's all the way up to here. But it is portable because you're going to move. I thought that was some people write on the wall when their children grow. But then when you move, you got to leave the wall. So great gift. And it was pink. Those my sorority colors pink. It looked like the letters were green, too. It looked like pink and green. He said, look what Daddy made. He had a bow on it. He took a special effort to do that. Even though he and Chloe weren't getting along, I thought that was a really nice gift. Uh, it's a material thing, but it was very thoughtful. I pray for prayers for better days for this young family. Um, and I just pray for the family dynamic here. I, when I was growing up, I went to private school until sixth grade, until seventh grade. And so when the seventh grade, when I was going to go to public school, I started going to the skating rink and I met a girl and I just went up to her and I said, I want us to be best friends because I always saw Leave it to Beaver had a best friend. Everybody had a best friend. So we were best friends, but I didn't know that the level of violence and molestation and cursing and fighting over there. Parents, make sure you know what kind of type of household your children are going to. And that people are going to be on their best behavior when you're visiting. But just pray. If it feels wrong, it is wrong. I learned how to curse at that house. I learned, oh. And nobody said, Judy, this is how you curse. I just saw the way people would just curse each other out. And like it was normal. What I'm saying is family dynamics can rub off on children. Children are like boards. They're like sponges. They absorb what's around them. Christy kept saying to Jade when they were arguing, I didn't raise you like that. Children don't do what we say all the time. They usually do what they see us do. And to Jade, Jade is trying. She's been taking care of herself, her daughter, her boyfriend, and, and, and many times her parents. Jade is trying. Jade, Jade you're a treasure. You're a treasure in a trap. Just remember that. You're a treasure. Then remember you all have caution with your child care. Pray about it. And don't use God's name in vain. Please don't. If you say all the bad words in the world, please don't use God's name in vain. He loves you. God loves you. And God has great plans for you. And whether you're in a multi-million multi dollar mansion with a family who gets along well, or whether you're in the trap cursing each other out, fighting over some crack rocks on the floor, you're a treasure. God has great plans for your life. Lord, bless everyone watching. Bless every family. Every child in the name of Jesus, God. We don't know how you do what you do, God, but we ask you to do it. And we thank you for it, Lord. We pray that you bless every family, every child watching in Jesus' name. And every child they share it with. In Jesus' name, amen. Boost. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and give you peace, power, and love. More love. Boost. Yeah. Zuckerberg by Pax Osa. Be sauce and falling. I be sauce and falling. Now that's a lead. I'd rather be a nerd. I feel like Zuckerberg. I feel like Zuckerberg. I'd rather read, I'd rather be a nerd, I feel like Zuckerberg, I feel like Zuckerberg. <laughs>